Hey, hey everyone, everyone. Triplicates here. here. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let us explain. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, I am Amanda Wacker. Hola, I am Lenise Castro. Swadika, I'm Asama Lekbua. And we are the Triplicates. Welcome to the 10th episode of season two of the Triplicates podcast. We are three first gen women of color currently in the second year of our PhD program at the University of California, San, San Diego. Diego. Last episode, we heard about Asama's journey through science. Yeah, and, and this episode, we're going to be learning more about Amanda's. Woo. Hi. Yeah. Hello. Welcome thank- to your show, Amanda. Oh, thank you for having me. Um, it's been wonderful to hear from you all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank um, you for clearing your schedule for us. Oh my gosh, of course. <laughs> Anything for y'all. <laughs> I don't know. I guess we can start from the beginning. Um, I was born on a Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Me too, me too. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. Yes. My mom was also born on a Thursday. Oh, I don't my know mom's when born I was on a born. Sunday. Oh, you can look it up. <laughs> She's like, Sunday is the best day to be born on. So I'm like, okay. It's the beginning of the week. I, I think guess. I was born on Sunday too. Oh, wow. Well. I'm going to look it up. Um, yeah. So anyways, uh, I was born in New Jersey and then we moved to Brazil like almost immediately. Hmm. I learned Portuguese first in Brazil, and then we came back to America. A lot had happened, um, and I was in preschool, I guess, when I was starting school in America again. So you started, yeah, I started pre-K. Yeah, I started pre-K, and I had um, I had a little stutter, which was fun. Hmm. Yeah, I went to um, speech therapy. Yeah, I went to speech therapy, hmm. and. I like almost immediately after that, after they sorted that out, they were like, oh, your kid's actually really smart. Let's put her in like gifted classes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I did like most like of all of my school in like advanced placement or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. And the one thing I do remember is in kindergarten, they didn't have like kindergarten gifted. So they put me with like the first grade gifted classes for like an hour. And there was one time we had to do this project about pirates and I we had to make a... <laughs> A cereal box of, like, a cereal box display. Like, you cut open the cereal box down the middle so it opens up. Mm-hmm. And I just refused to do it. And I, I refused to oh, do I it. Oh, I just didn't do it. And then she looked at me and she was like, where's your project? And I said, I didn't want to do it. <laughs> and then I don't think they put me back in those classes for a little oh, bit. Oh, no. Yeah, it's fine. I also, like, that's a sign that you're not gifted anymore. Uh, no, I just had a very strong personality. <laughs> still do. Yes, I still do. <laughs> If I don't want to do something, I am not doing it. Um, Wait, this was in Florida or New Jersey? In Florida. I didn't go to school in New Jersey at all. All my school is in Florida. Yeah. But like we moved around a lot. It was like a a lot of moving. Um, Yeah. But then we ended up in, I guess I was in gifted classes in um, when we lived in like Fort Myers. And that's like on the west coast of Florida. And that I think helped me feel like, I don't know. I was really good at math at that point. Mm -hmm. I was interested in science. And then when I moved to like Fort Lauderdale, like that area, um, I was put into, I went to fifth grade at like this elementary school. And that was like the whole time, mm. like just like a whole gifted program. Whoa. And I got to do like robotics. I think it was like the first Lego mm-hmm. League stuff. Um, and that was super <gasps> cool. And I, I don't know. It was like since moving that time, like since that fifth grade situation, like onward, I was like pretty much chilling. I got my stuff together. Dang. Um, And then in middle school, I did like a magnet program. And basically all it was was instead of just one elective, I did um, two hours of science instead of just one. Whoa. Yeah. So I did that for Were you learning about magnets? I am learning about what? (laughs) Magnets? Oh. Sorry. Um, Yeah. I guess I did learn about magnets. Mm -hmm. We also got to like solder our own robots and 
What? Yeah, there's like other that stuff that we did. Dangerous. Sounds unsafe. Oh, it was absolutely dangerous, and we should not have been doing that. I feel like, <laughs> but on brand for Florida. <laughs> oh, for sure, on brand for Florida. Yeah. Um, so much was happening, and then uh, what else happened? And then I went to, I don't know what was going on that I when I was going to high school, you could have gone into this like communications and broadcasting arts program, or for like IB, which is like international baccalaureate, which is like where all the smart kids go, quote unquote. I'm saying that. But you was, are a smart kid. Yeah, but You've I like been gifted did. all your life. Yes, but I did not like the personalities of people mm. in IB. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't. I don't know. I'm like, I'm very chill and they're very not. Um, yeah. So I, I went into communications and broadcasting because I thought it'd be fun. Was Whoa. it fun? Oh, it was so much fun. I had so much fun all the time and I like got to do a bunch of cool things that I would have never done otherwise and I got to run the yearbook and I got to learn about film. Lenny's just laughing. What? Do I look like someone who works in yearbook? No. Okay. I mean I laughed because I chewed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so <no>. my chewy, <laughs> chew. oh. There are anyway, so sorry. many episodes. I'm just like Lenny snacking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. It's yeah. So I know. I, j- I ate right before I came here. Um. Yeah. But like during that whole time, I kind of didn't know what I wanted to do. I like went into communications and broadcasting because I told myself that I wanted to like direct nature documentaries. And that was always the thing I was super interested in doing. Why nature documentary? I don't know. I love a documentary. And I was like, oh, these are so fun. I would love to make these. Um, But like, I think what I really liked about them was like the science and the exploration Mm. of Mm -hmm. the natural world and Mm -hmm. how things worked. So I have a question. Yeah. Is there like a movement to make nature documentaries less like chill? What do you mean less chill? Like I think I learn better at a faster and warmer and like more conversational pace. Oh. But every time I watch like, Not oh, like Animal Kingdom and stuff, it's just like, look, here's an animal. You don't blah, like blah, blah. David, what is it? David Attenborough? Just sitting there being fascinating. fascinating. Uh, honestly, <laughs> like He's made a whole career out of this. It's it's time to get the neuroscience communicators okay. on there. Can I tell you something? I used to have yeah. a group chat named the David Attenborough fan club. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. Um, yep, I'm a hater. So. Yeah. Well, okay. I there's There might be some that I would recommend to you. Um, uh-huh. None of them being David Attenborough, if that's not your vibe. But yes. some of them are generally, gen, gen, genuinely uh-huh. stressful because there's so much happening. And oh. I'm nervous about these things like getting eaten. And then, we like, boom, bam, Black boom, bam. <gasps> boom, bam, boom, bam. Yeah, there's a lot. Um, on Disney Plus, there's actually a lot of them that I would recommend. There's one, I think, Will Smith. Um, <laughs> I narrates. would love to hear Will Smith narrate. I think it's him. Oh, fun. Yeah, mm. that one's pretty good. Maybe it's, is it blue? I don't know. Mm. I'll look it up for you, though. Cool, Circle cool, cool. of life. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, we should have had a prepared snippet of, like, whatever script and have Amanda narrate it. Oh, no. Oh, like I don't the know if I'm a narrator. I feel like it would be... She narrates her um, rotors. <laughs> and now, the rotors spin. My I'll control do is doing an arc. Fascinating. <laughs> Fascinating. Imagine. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. No, me doing that analysis is just like, is that a circle? <laughs> <laughs> is it... Mm, it kind of looks like a heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nope. It's a reflection of your own glasses. Oh, Oops. no. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, Whoa. yeah. So I did communication broadcasting arts. And then um, also during this time, I was, I like had soared through my math classes. Um, and then mm-hmm. I had gotten to the point where they were like, well, you can take these AP Cal classes because there's like nothing else we can give you at this, like other than that. So it was like first week of junior year, and it's all IB kids, and I'm the only CBA kid. And the you're profess- what communication communication broadcasting? Yeah, they like separate. Like, what does IB stand for again? International Baccalaureate. Okay, okay. It's like the IB. So it's program. IB or CBA, or you're in neither program, and you're just like what they would call regular kids. But I don't agree with that language. <gasps> yeah, yeah, but yeah, it was like a whole little hierarchy. Like the IB kids were. Above the CBA kids. Like that was like the situation. Yeah. It was like rough. Anyways. um, So I'm in this calculus class. And I am terrified. Because I'm like bro. 
these are these IB kids been been in IB math classes. You know what I mean? They weren't in the math classes I were in. I was in. Um, so I was like, okay, the the teacher. I guess they're teachers in high school. <laughs> yeah, I always forget. That I always too. say that. I just say professor. Even when I talk about my scuba diver instructor, I'm like, oh, the professor. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is like not not the same thing. But um, so the teacher was like, oh, I have. I, I had the class first period, and she was like, oh, if you want to come before class for their version of office hours, I guess, like if you have questions or whatever, mm. um, you can come in. It's the first week of class. I'm like, let me not get behind, right? Now I'm scared. And she she had said some stuff that I, like, <gasps> alienated oh, me. No. Oh, it was terrible. This, this is, is like, the, the one that you tweet about? It wasn't her. It was her next door neighbor, but like it's all connected. Oh, oh gosh. So the, the week started, maybe the second week or, or second day or something. She had us all line up against the wall, <laughs> the walls. And then she would ask us a question. You would answer it. And then you would pick the next person. <gasps> Yikes. And it, you just went like that. And I was like the whole class. And like none of these people know me because I'm not in their program. Like I don't know any of these students. Um, so like that was very stressful. And then she she had said on the first day like oh we have a CBA kid with us it's they they usually don't last and then oh, or like oh they no. haven't had a CBA kid in, in their class for a while and then we were doing something I'll tell the the first story for, like this, I'll give it sequentially so we were doing that those two things happened then I had came in early maybe it was Friday um, to go over the stuff we had learned this week because we had homework right so I'm like let me make sure I know how to do my homework before mm. I go anywhere so I'm at her desk before class starts. And it's like a classroom situation where there's a door connecting the room, like between two rooms. So mm -hmm. if you are walking on one side of the hallway, you don't have to walk all the way around to get to your room. If you're like in the next hallway over, you can just walk through someone else's oh. classroom. So the guy that was walking through the classroom, Mr. Snow, a terrible person. I'm just going to say that. Um, oh no. He like looks at me and he's like, Oh, what are you doing here? And I'm like, Oh, I'm like, you know, I'm getting help. And she's like, Oh, are you dumb that you need help your first week? Like literally to my face that are you dumb or like you must be dumb. I was like, Damn. this was a teacher, a teacher. So that happened. That was Friday morning. OK, no. this is before first period. First period happens and it's we're supposed to pair up to do this thing. It's about wrapping a piece of paper into a cone around a sphere, like a tennis ball is what we had. And she was like, oh, pair up. There's an odd number of students. No. And none of these people are in my program, so they don't know me. Mm -hmm. So obviously, no one's going to pick me to be their partner. And I was like, okay, like, that's fine. Everyone pairs up. I'm like, okay, I'll do it by myself. Mm -hmm. I do it by myself. And obviously, I get done faster because I don't have anyone else to, like, talk to, right? Mm -hmm. I can just do the thing. Yes. So I do the thing, and she's like, oh, when you're done, like, bring it up to me. I bring it up to her, mm -hmm. and she's like, oh, see, even a CBA kid can <gasps> do it. No. No. Even? Even, Yeah. Oh. Literally, the bell rang, got my stuff, went immediately to my guidance counselor. I was <gasps> like, you have to take me out of this What's class. What's her name? I don't remember. Oh. But I was like crying. I was like, you have to take me out of this no. class. I can't do this. Um, and luckily, it was still like the first week of school. So they were like, okay, like, let's try to get you into dual enrollment. And I just like did dual enrollment. And they cut my schedule. So What's I'd, dual enrollment? Dual enrollment is when you get to go take college classes like on a college campus. <gasps> Oh, wow. Yeah. So they cut my schedule so I didn't have to be on campus. It's like every day I left at 12. I didn't have to come like for sixth and seventh period. Mm. I could just sleep at lunch. And then I would go do my class because my class was in the afternoon. Wow. Um, but it was only two days of the week in the afternoon. So I got like mm. a lot of time off, which was nice. And then even my, mm. I finessed too because my next semester. Wow. Surprised. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my next semester, I, I took a speech class mm. and I did... It was hybrid. So it was mostly online. And you met one Saturday a month to do your speeches. Mm. And they still let, let me keep my like cut class schedule. So I only had like I only had like half days nice. for my entire senior year. Wow. It was dope, bro. That's why you're so good at talking. <laughs> <laughs> that was that. And then like also my entire life was like so much happened all the time. Like I had two house fires. One in. <gasps> yeah. Both of them happened when I was in middle school. One of them I wasn't there. One of them I was there for. So like we lost all of our stuff twice. And then my dad got diagnosed with cancer when I was in high school. And I thought he was going to die, but he's like still alive somehow, which is like, <laughs> like, it's like, what? And then my mom had a tumor in her uterus. I must have been when I was in eighth grade. And we found out the two days before my birthday. So it was like not fun. Oh, no. <laughs> Vibes were off, bro, that whole week. Um, 
And then, yeah. So then she got her tumor taken out. Or she got her whole uterus taken out, I guess, uh, in December. Talking about your mama's uterus? I mean, listen. It's all important. Um, (laughs) She got her… She got a hysterectomy. And the doctor had accidentally sliced her (laughs) urethra (laughs) or something. Yeah. So she had an infection and we didn't know why. And they… Like, I was with my mom when she got her hysterectomy. And they, like, are looking at me. My mom, like, speaks English. But… You know, they're like looking at me to be like, yo, if you see if she has a fever, if there's this, if there's that, like bring her back. Something's wrong. Mm-hmm. So my mom gets her hysterectomy um, Wednesday, maybe Thursday. And on Friday morning, I go to like kiss my mom like goodbye. I kiss her on the forehead. She it's has hot. a fever. And I'm like, oh, fuck. So I'm like, okay. I take my mom to the hospital. Mm-hmm. And it's just like the, we're there the whole day. They can't figure out what's wrong with her. They're doing all these scans. And then my mom, like, can't move. Like, she, like, is in so much pain she can't move. No. It was, like, the scariest thing I've ever seen. And then they are just, like, oh, like, some like because of the infection, she, like, couldn't pee. And apparently if you can't pee, your body just is upset about everything. And you, like, are almost paralyzed. And they were, like, oh, if you had waited another, like, that. 30 minutes or something, like, she, like, you would have been, it would have been really bad. So that was, like, so stressful. Scary. And then my mom was, like, in the hospital for a little bit. And then… Like, in the hospital, as in, was staying overnight. Like, she was not at the house. Mm. And then my brother was working. So, I was just, like, alone. I was, like, okay, well, I guess I, like, am doing everything at the house now. And then my mom had a heart attack (gasps) one day. Yeah, that was, like, the worst. I would go see my mom on the weekends. Um, Like, my brother would go take me. Because she was at, like, they moved her to a hospital further away. My brother Mm. would go drive me there. And... I, my mom is super old school. Like, oh, on Sundays, you like you dress up. And even if you're just cleaning the house, like you should look nice and da-da-da, whatever. Ooh. So I had spent the morning like getting nice, like looking nice so I can go see my mom because I know this is like an important thing for her to like look nice on Sundays. Yeah. Mm. And she had had a heart attack in the morning. Mm. While, like imagine thinking your mom is going to die mm. while you're like doing your hair. Mm-hmm. So no. I was like, it was so much. Yeah. It was a lot. And then after that, like, it was, like, fine. I would, like, I went to school. They put her in a hospital closer to me um, that, like, was literally, like, down the street from my middle school. So I would, like, go walk and see her after school. And then I would walk home. Um, mm. And then it was, like, yeah. And then she was, like, chilling. Um, <laughs> I, like, it's, like, it's so weird. She has, like, kidney problem. Okay. I'm, I'll tell you this after. It was, like, so much weird things happen uh, with my mom. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah, that was, like, my biggest, like, wake-up call of, like, oh, shit, like, I gotta do stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I gotta, like, I, I don't know. I, like, have to take care of my family. I have to take care of my mom. Like, mm-hmm. um, that was, like, the biggest thing that I think happened. That, like, got me into a different mindset. Um, and it was always, like, oh, Amanda is smart. She'll go to college. She'll go to college. But after that, it was, like, oh, I have to go to college. Like, mm-hmm. this is, like, the, I have to, like, make money to take care of my family. Like, I'm not letting my mom mm-hmm. go to, like, a retirement home or something. Or, like, you know what I mean? And I was, like, yeah. I don't. That's not what I want. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, that was, like, that was me at age, I don't know, 14, maybe? Mm -hmm. Whatever. And then, yeah. And then when my dad had cancer, that's what made me want to go into research. Because I, like, was looking into, like, what happened. My dad has polycythema vera, which is, there's, your body makes too many red blood cells. Mm. And, like, you hear about leukemia, which is too many white blood cells. Mm -hmm. And I was, like, what is this, like, red blood cell? Like, why is this happening? So, I was, like, looking into, like, stem cells and, like, Mm -hmm. how your body makes blood. And, like, why that would go wrong and like also like how this affects other parts of your body and all that stuff um so that's what kind of got me into research Mm -hmm. like wanting to do research and then I didn't know what to do with like oh I want to do research Mm -hmm. I went to college like being pre-med because I thought like oh people who do medical research are doctors yeah and they technically are but not medical doctors Mm mm-hmm but the first um, the first lab I worked in was a cancer lab, and they were looking at like DNA replication initiation. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, and I basically got into that lab because I was like, okay, like this is I want to do cancer research. I guess like mm-hmm. I didn't really know what else was out there. It just seemed like the thing to do. Like I was like, this is what I was interested in. Um, but also that lab was a mess. Oh. Um, yeah, I went to Florida State University, which is uh, a good research school, known as a party school, but also. <laughs> Uh, it was like the, the I don't know this man his name was I don't know if I should say his name, his name. I guess you could find it if you, yeah anyways he like um the PI yeah the PI so it was like the PI 
and his wife. And then they had a uh, undergrad student who was like older, but he was in Italy. Mm-hmm. The I I wanted to join the lab my first semester of freshman, so it would have been fall of freshman year. Wow! And he was in Italy for that fall, so they were like, "Yeah, you can come," because like he's not going to be here. His name was Matt, the undergrad. Mm-hmm. So like, Matt's not going to be here, so like we need help. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. I I work in this research lab. I come every Tuesday, and I stay there like all day. Mm-hmm. And then they hired me to stay in the summer. And then I go, I go to this dance um, festival thing mm. back when you can go be around a bunch of people in one tiny room. <laughs> I go to this dance festival and then I come back and they're defrosting all of the samples in the minus 80. Oh no, that's never a good thing. Like, like all of the samples, like the sink is just filled with bags of like <gasps> frozen conical tubes and. Are they destroying some evidence? Uh, no, they were like, oh, we're leaving. But usually when you leave, you save your They weren't stuff. leaving to another. They were going to like private, like mm. nonprofit. Mm. They weren't going to another academic thing. Yeah. So it was just like, ah. Uh, and I was like, oh, I'm going to stay in this lab for four years. I'll have such a good letter of rec. I'll get into grad school. Da, 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 da. Everything's going to be good and dandy. And then but it don't wasn't. Know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and the universe said no. Yeah. Um, so, so they didn't really like communicate with you where they oh, were headed. No. no. And it was like so weird too. Because like before I left. So like I went on the weekend. Right. Like so I, maybe I left like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I came back Monday. Um, and like for the whole week. Like the PI wasn't there. And I was asking mm. like the, the his wife. Who's like the I guess a senior scientist. Mm. Uh-huh. So like, you know, she wasn't a postdoc. But she like wasn't the PI you know so like whatever mm-hmm. they're called it's like oh where is he and she's like oh his car broke down I'm like oh you're here <laughs> <laughs> you ever heard of carpooling yeah and then I was like oh something so they had daughters so I was like oh something with the daughters I was like okay and then I was like just to come back to be like oh he was leaving he was probably doing interview at wherever yeah. he just was getting his job oh, yeah 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 oh wait what? okay <laughs> Side story of something hilarious. What? So back in biotech, this wasn't like the place that I was actively working at, but someone like a coworker told me that one time this person like dressed all nice and sharp and blazer, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then another coworker jokingly said, while looking sharp, what are you interviewing for a new job or something? <laughs> and then he went, yeah. And then he just <laughs> left in the middle of the work day. <laughs> oh no. And then he got that job and I was like, that's bull. That's Dang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway. Yeah. So that was, that was super fun. Um, and then they handed me off to the, Dean of Research, I guess, at the College of Whoa. Medicine, because that's that's who was responsible. I guess I don't know. I wasn't in the medical school at all. I was in like the biology, which is in the school they of arts and science. They just handed you off. Yeah, well, the, like, the, here, they were like, it. we don't know what to do with these students. Oh, um, and he mm. kind of told me like, oh, you can just get absorbed because the other undergrad was going to be absorbed by the lab next door. Mm. Um, or get you can. Absorbed. Like, go try a different, try to get yourself into a different lab. And I was like, I want to try to get myself into a different lab. Mm-hmm. So I like, I'm starting to email people, not really sure what I'm doing, mm-hmm. not sure what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And then I get into this lab that does spinal cord injury research. Ooh. Yeah, which is super cool, which also my dad has a spinal cord injury. So it's like everything is just connected back to like my dad's uh, <laughs> medical problems. Medical issues. <laughs> um, and then I went to a heart lab after that, and my dad has a heart problem. <laughs> it's so, it's, yeah. So, like, anything that ever goes wrong with my dad, he's like, oh, you studied this. What happened? What happened? I'm, like, I'm like, bro, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> Please go see a medical you? professional. <laughs> um, yeah. But, so anyways, I'm in this, like, spinal cord research lab, and it was bonkers, bro. Like, <laughs> it was, <laughs> I was working under a grad student, and, like, poor her, um, I, one time, I I think I, we talked about this in the horror stories when we did our Halloween episode. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that I like went to do a protein like concentration <laughs> thing and I didn't let it defrost all the way. Nope. Yeah. Um. But she also was like the first person to try to teach me how to code. Oh yeah. Which was super cool. Like I learned mm-hmm. like our like basics from R from her, which was like super neat. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And then so she was. I went to go do an internship. And then it came back and one of the postdocs had quit and she, the grad student I was working under, had a lot of problems with the PI we were working under. Oh no. no. And the PI was basically telling her like she shouldn't come into lab. She should just be writing her dissertation. Oh. 
And it was like, it was a lot. And it was like day two of being back at school after my internship. And she basically told me like, get out. (gasps) Like not like my my grass, student was like, get out of here. Like if I'm not here to protect you, like leave, like you're not going to have a good time here. Oh, and I was no. like, oh, okay, bye. there I go cr- crying to a guidance counselor again. <laughs> 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 like it was it was so much. Yeah. But then we like were like she was like, OK, because the thing is, I was registered for like credit hours. Mm. Oh. So, you need so I hours. needed to be in a lab. And like, mm-hmm. you know, if you go cry to a guidance counselor, <laughs> they try to help you, <laughs> um, which is what I learned, I guess, <laughs> through my years of schooling. Um asking for help yeah oh please help that reframing yeah so she was like oh like let's try to get you in a lab like i'll give you like a couple weeks to like figure it out and then if you don't get if you don't find a new lab like just come come back and like Mm. we'll figure it out Mm -hmm. okay so there i just had done this internship with uh leslie linewand at c boulder hhmi like badass woman in stem Mm -hmm. like runs her own companies she's like does Mm -hmm. like runs this big lab she has a lot of like uh, like sex differences and in, in heart stuff. And mm-hmm. it's oh. like, it was really cool. I really loved working there. So I'm like, okay, I have all this heart experience. Let me just like go try to be in a cardiac lab. So there was this guy, this grad student I knew who was working in a heart lab. And I was like, yo, ask your PI if he wants a grad, uh, an, under, an undergrad. So he's like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm going to dinner with him. Like tonight we can like, I'll, I'll just throw it in there and see what he says. Mm. So they're at dinner with this heart dude. And some new faculty that were just hired at the medical school. (gasps) And yeah, what is going to happen? It's like a movie. Yeah. On the next episode. (laughs) (laughs) So my friend uh, goes, oh, like I I know this undergrad who was just in Leslie's lab Mm. that's looking for for a lab to do her honors thesis in. Mm -hmm. And the hard dude that I was trying to get into his lab, he was kind of like, oh, we don't really have space for an undergrad. Like who's going to train them? Blah, 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 whatever. Mm -hmm. And then this new faculty, uh, Dr. Michelle Parvatiar, she was like, slide me her number. Like, <laughs> let me talk to this girl. Oh, um, yeah, so Dr. Parvatiar, uh, Michelle, I called her Dr. P, but now, we, we, now we're on first name basis. Say Michelle. <laughs> yes, we're not colleagues. Um, yeah, so Michelle, uh, she studied muscular dystrophy in the heart. Mm-hmm. And I started my junior year and I did my honors thesis in our lab but it was like a brand new lab like we didn't have nothing in the lab mm-hmm. we were painting the cell culture room <laughs> oh, together kind of thing um, what color it oh, was wait, like it's white. yeah okay yeah it's because I guess they had a, a bench or something in there mm-hmm. and the top half was painted one color and the bottom half was just like peeled off from oh. like whenever they pulled out whatever was there um, rude. yeah but it was like it was cool I like started realizing um i was like super independent Mm -hmm. in what i was doing because i was just like i was doing qpcrs i was doing western blots and like all summer all i did was qpcr and western blots like i would do four qpcrs a day and a western blot which one did you prefer at the time um i like i mean westerns were cuter the thing with the qpcr westerns are cuter (laughs) i I don't know they're like kind of fun to make the little sandwiches and (laughs) like watch the gel go (gasps) I think a couple of things that happened also when I, this is just me talking now. You know what I mean? I'm just mm-hmm. vibing. Mm-hmm. Um, some <laughs> other things that happened was when I did my first internship, uh, that was my first time meeting graduate students. Mm. Like for real, for real, like not just the grad student I was working under, like just grad students in general that were like people. And like Aww. we hung out and did stuff because they were like, we had peer mentors. They were like our peer mentors mm-hmm. for the internship. And we were like, we're, paired with one and we would like check in with them regularly and then we had meetings on Wednesdays that we all had to go to together and like everyone was there and then we went like um white water rafting together Ooh. we went to downtown stuff together we did this together we did all this stuff together That's so nice it was so cute but um that was the first time I saw like Latina grad students and there was like a lot of them I mean a lot being more than like one. three or four of them, mm-hmm. <laughs> which seems like a lot. Um, for some, that I mean, is a lot. It is a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I can think of like three. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Well, it, it was not just in one program, so they had. Oh. It was like some of them were in engineering, and some of them were in like biology, right. and some of them were in, in whatever. They like split up their. It wasn't an umbrella program. It was like more split up. So. Mm. Yeah, but that was like my first time seeing grad students that were like just themselves and. Mm. 
Like there was this one girl from my, I probably told the story already, but like there's this one girl was from Miami and like, I loved her so much. She was like so cool and she like was fun and like just dressed like herself and it wasn't Mm -hmm. a whole thing. And she, it just really showed me like, okay, you can still be like a baddie Mm -hmm. and do good science and like be respected in your field. And yeah. And she's super cool. She started a, a, like started a startup. Nice. Yeah. Nice. She, she does like tissue 3D printing stuff. So it's really cool. Mm. Um, yeah. So like that was really influential of like, okay, I need me some strong mentorship and like I want to really do a good job. I really want to go to grad school. So like after that, I came back um, and was like, okay, I want to do my honors thesis. Like I have to do this. Like mm-hmm. put my stake in the ground of like, okay, I can like do a big project and like get it done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then I did that uh, and I studied muscular dystrophy in the heart, I guess. Um, I, we, I did it in like a there's like one protein in the like complex that gets knocked out. So like I did all my stuff in like the knockout mice. Mm. Um, learned I didn't like working with mice. Mm. It made me sad. Mm. <laughs> so I that's think important. The to sex learn. made you yeah. sad. Yeah. 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 That's a lot. Yeah. Couldn't be me. Uh, yeah. But it was like, I don't know. It like the the thing that made me sad is like seeing things go to like not be used and you still have to like get rid of mice because there's just too many mice in the housing like mm. stuff and that costs money. Like you get play I don't know if we paid by mouse or by cage, but still it's like I don't know. One time I had to like sack this pregnant mom just because there was <gasps> like we didn't need the mice. And I was like, dang, <gasps> this hurts. Yeah. Like this is like a lot. So yeah. So then I was like, okay, we're not working with animals anymore. Let me get my bag up on other stuff. Um, and yeah, so that was like most of my science stuff in college and undergrad. I was so busy and I like loved every second of being busy. Also, I I mm. think that's the best thing for me is just to keep myself busy. Um, so I first week of school... Well, it actually started the summer. Me and my mom like to watch movies together. That's like our thing. Cute. And we'd watch Dirty Dancing Havana Nights. Whoa. That's the best one. It's, I, I haven't get seen it that Dirty original. Dancing is like, it's the original, but yeah. like Havana Nights is. I don't think I've seen that one. Buddy. We should watch don't it. Don't tell December you said that. <laughs> I am sorry, December. <laughs> D is a Dirty Dancing, the original stan. Whoa. I don't yeah. know. But alliteration oh. just makes sense. Yeah. Um, but I've never, I don't know. I've never seen the first one. But anyways, I saw the second one where they get like are in Cuba and they're like dancing and I'm like, I want to dance like that. So mm-hmm. I go on our Florida State University clubs and activities page. <laughs> and I'm like dance clubs <laughs> and they have a Cuban salsa um, dance club. This was freshman year. So you, this was before yeah. I even went. Like this oh. was like Whoa. before I even went. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, okay, I'm joining this club. I go first week of school. Uh, I bring like one of my friends from my CBA program had come in. She like went in on engineering. And I was like, oh, like come to this thing with me. And like, you know, you're a freshman. Like you don't know anybody else. So it's just like you, you you, and your one friend are going to everything together. <laughs> like that's it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we went and I had so much fun. Yay. Oh my God. I had so much fun. What was um, your dancing experience? Oh, like, none. At that point. Uh. My mom took me out of ballet when I was younger because I was bad at it. <laughs> oh, no. So that's what we were working off of. But ballet's very different from. Like, oh yeah, but also I was like six, like. So she does. <laughs> I don't know. You, you're asking for a lot. I mean, some six-year-olds are really good at dancing. It wasn't me. Um, yeah. So then, um, and it was really cool because we got to. You got a lot of volunteer hours for it because they gave oh. like free lessons to the public, which technically counts as volunteer hours, and then. We did a lot of performances like within the community and um, we like mm-hmm. got to do a lot of stuff at schools and mm-hmm. it was really neat to do that. And I really mm-hmm. enjoyed learning. And then after a while I was teaching and like I really loved teaching. Like it was it was just so much fun. And it really got to the point where it was uh, I don't know, it was like all I did mm-hmm. really like and it was you start doing one dance and then there's like other dance clubs. So we would go support other dance clubs. So. It was like on Monday I had, and then I was on another, I was on a mambo dance team too, just like a different style of salsa. Um, So I'd have mambo on Mondays. I volunteered at this, um, it was like Dare to Dream. It was like this, uh, this 
after school program kind of for mm. for girls and you just like help them with their homework and mm -hmm. the lady who ran it was like super cool mm. and wanted to like, build up their confidence and like have them be like high self-esteem and you know help them get through whatever like Tallahassee is not a great public school system mm -hmm. so it's really just like trying to support kids and like help them feel confident confident in like their school abilities and like themselves and mm. it was like so much fun um so Aww. yeah so I'd volunteer Tuesday and Thursdays on Wednesdays we had um I had the Azucar is the Cuban salsa club that I was in Mm -hmm. um so Wednesday we had a Zucar Thursday I would go volunteer immediately go to Tango immediately after that go to Bochata Fever what yeah so it was like and I was in lab like all day Thursday so it was like I would literally not be home the whole day mm. and then Friday um we would go dancing Saturday we would go dancing Sunday I would have Mamba practice mm -hmm. and then teach for a Zucar like for the members so that they know how to go teach on Wednesdays wow. and that was like my life and then we would go travel. We would go perform. We would go here. We would go there. Um, that's like all I did for like four years. How do you manage your time? Mm -hmm. Oh, the way I, I woke up super early and like I would go. So one of the, I went to Tango and the, I think I started Tango my freshman year. And the guy, like the advisor, the faculty advisor for Tango is the head of the Department of Computer Science. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So he he was like a weird old man but like he was like harmless you know but it was just like the department of computer science was in the main like in one of the we had like a science library so like in the science library but not in the science library you had to take this like secret elevator up to the fourth floor oh no where like no one else can really come in there's like this whole wall of just open windows some tables two couches they got a fridge they got a microwave i was like listen bro this is the life Yes. So I would just go there. <laughs> I would go there every morning um, and just do all my homework. Mm. And then I would go to class. And then if I had time in between, I'd go back, do my homework. Mm -hmm. And it was like, if you're doing stuff in the afternoon, there's no way to procrastinate. Like, oh, I'm not going to do this because I know I'm, I don't have time to do this later. So I'm just mm -hmm. going to do it now. Yeah. Um, so I think like that really helped me like stay on top of everything because there was no oh later. Or like, I'll do it tomorrow. There's not. And I'll do it tomorrow because I know I have things from like 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. So I'm not I'm not going anywhere, you know. Um, so I think that really helped me. And I think that's like what I lost a lot of in like coming to grad school and like not having things to do. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, it doesn't matter when I do this because I'm going to be home all day because we're in a pandemic and there's nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah. Fun. <laughs> yeah. Correct. Cries. Yeah. But I think it's like I still – even like now, I think I make my weekends super busy, but like not mm -hmm. for any, uh, not for any reason that helps me. <laughs> no, it helps you. Do you have the schedule? I guess so. Yeah. But it's like, I have so much grading to do. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what I haven't done? <laughs> Yesterday, wow. I stayed up till 2 a.m. grading one question on the final. Mm -hmm. And I have three more questions, I guess. So, But you had so much fun. Grading? I didn't do I didn't do anything yesterday, bro. Grading. Oh, I guess we watched Rue. That's why it was late. Yeah, I was like, what did mm -hmm. I do yesterday that I would have be grading? Like, yeah, yeah. But like, that's fun. I like seeing my friends, and it's mm -hmm. like I love having people over too because I will only clean my house if I know someone is coming <laughs> over. So I need y'all to come over, or else yes. I won't clean my house. <laughs> mm, I guess that's why I don't clean my house. Yeah, Let's just invite people over. That's the thing. That's the thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so yeah. So anyways. Yeah, I was I did all this stuff in undergrad and then I was like, okay, time to go to grad school. Um I had picked 10 schools to apply to and I only ended up applying to two, which I don't recommend. Um <laughs> absolutely the most stressful experience of my life. Um, <laughs> at least like the my most academic place. Of like, all of the things. No, no, no. Of like the academic about. situation. Oh yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. Well, the thing is I got this internship for after undergrad, like the summer after undergrad. Yes. Where? Tell us. Uh NASA. Whoa. Yeah. And they were like, oh, this internship is for people who are in school or about to be going to grad school. So like I should have been starting grad school the next, yeah, in the fall, like immediately after this internship. And I was like, if I don't get in and I lose this NASA internship, mm. I'm going to feel so dumb. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but you didn't. But I didn't. Everything was fine. And then I went and did the internship and there were people who were like, oh yeah, I'm taking a gap year. I'm going to maybe <laughs> apply to medical school. I'm like, damn, mm. bitch. I was just so stressed for nothing. Should have just called them and see how strict they were about this rule. <laughs> yeah. Given the pandemic too, like people's plans oh, changed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this, yeah. So my internship was in 
I guess it started in May and like pandemic started in March. So like they were they just threw that shit online, yeah. did not know what was going on. Mm. It was a lot, yeah. But I think if I if that internship was in person, I would have been burnt out by now. Oh, really? Yeah. Like I I don't know. I did not expect grad school to be so much energy. Mm. Mm. Like I thought I would be doing the same shit I was doing in undergrad, where I was like, oh, I only have to be here from like here this hour to this hour, and then I can go do all my fun stuff and then come back in the morning. Mm. and then go do all my fun stuff and then come back you know but that's yeah it's not like that grad school is like work yeah yeah (sighs) yeah and I don't know I thought it I was in especially my senior year I was in lab almost every day for like a stretch of hours Mm. so I was like oh it'd be like this you know like oh I'm Mm. in lab for four hours go take a class come back finish my gel come like go home but that's it's it's not like that (laughs) It's not like that at all. <laughs> but it's great. Yeah, I mean, I'm because you get to myself. teach and stuff. Yeah, I'm almost done teaching for Yay. Build One, which has been fun, but mm. not looking forward to teaching a lab. <laughs> Nor am I. Yeah. No, yeah. I just remember that I have that next year too. Oh, maybe we should all teach the same one, <gasps> and then we can share slides. Whoa, mm-hmm. which one will we teach? I don't know. Not. Like I want to teach. One? The, the one level. Claire Meters is, I think that's her last name. What is yes. that one? She's build one. A uh, recombinant DNA. I Ooh, oh. I know a little something something about that. Okay, I know how to clone, kind of. On a good I day. don't. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll like, take if, different if classes. I'm, <laughs> if I'm feeling lucky, then I can clone. I would almost. <laughs> you know what lab I really loved? My immunology lab. Whoa. I would almost teach that. I don't know. If, oh, I know enough about immunology. I think, as like a. Much more than I did in undergrad. Hmm. But I don't know if they would let me. And if I don't know, I can just be like, look, I'm a grad student. I know yeah. how to learn. But I mean, I also, like, I feel like I have the ability to Google things. Yes. Because that's all I do. Yeah, yeah bro. <laughs> Facts. Just be Google. I know what to Google. Yeah. yeah. That's, that is it. That is it. Just know what to Google. But yeah. Anyways, um, I feel like that was a roller coaster. Um... Do you want to talk about yeah. Stembassy at all? How oh my you got God. involved with I forgot about that. That stardom. You dipped your toe yes. into Psycom. Psycom, yeah. Um, mm. I have a lot of feelings about that, mm. actually. Um, oh, like, I don't know. Good one? No, no, no. About like, I don't think I do Psycom. Oh. Um, yeah. You don't think you do Psycom? No. Okay. I don't I think know. we talk about doing science, but we don't talk about science. Like, I don't, I don't communicate things to the public. Mm. Yeah, you do. You've been on podcasts and such. You do dazzle. That's that that dazzles like present. I don't know. There's a, anyways. I will start from the beginning. And uh, so I came. Oh, this is pre-pandemic. Mm-hmm. I was following uh, Raven the Science Maven yes. on Instagram. I think. Think not really sure how I found her Instagram. Oh, I think the so that grad student that I liked, uh, that I thought was cool and my first internship that I was like oh she was so cool and she wore her cute clothes and blah 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 mm-hmm. I followed her on Instagram and she had reposted one of Raven's like hip hop rapping yes. science videos or whatever so I followed her and then she was like oh is anyone up for shenanigans and you know I love shenanigans, shenanigans. <laughs> that was the wording she used mm-hmm. um, and you know I love shenanigans so I, obviously I DM'd this, this, uh, this person I don't know on the internet um and I was like what's up with this super shenanigans? safe practice oh absolutely <laughs> <laughs> um and she's like oh like I want to do this thing and I was like okay yeah I'm down it was like uh she wanted to do this like live show and like have people want to talk about their science and like them being themselves in STEM and mm-hmm. just like have fun engage with people mm-hmm. and like bring like science to the public yes um so I was like yeah so I was like the first guest with two other uh women in stem Mm -hmm. and it was so much fun we vibed so well it was cute it was lovely we had a great time and then we were like okay bye i guess and then after two episodes or something raven was like do you guys want to just stay on as like hosts well it's like i think our energy was good and i was like okay Uh, (laughs) of course i do hair flips yeah so i was Senior year of undergrad, I had just done my interview at uh, at here, mm-hmm. um, and pandemic. Our f- our first episode, I think that we had. I don't remember if it was our first episode that like we had we were hosts or like our first episode together ever. But mm. I remember one of the things we talked about was 
whether or not the U.S. would be ready to deal with a global health situation. Yeah. Oh. And the answer was no. no. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the thing is, so Chanel, who's like one of the other, who was like one on the first episode and became a host with me. Um, she's a public health, mm-hmm. like that's her whole piece. She's in public health mm-hmm. and like works with the government on public health things. So if yeah. anyone was going to be like, oh, I don't think we're ready for this. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and now we are, here we are three years later. <laughs> Just like, <sighs> Yeah. So anyway, so we did Seven Sea for three seasons, I think. It was great. I, I really enjoyed it because I got to take all that stuff I learned in communications and broadcasting arts in high school and like stuff I was learning in undergrad with like science and mm-hmm. like science, you know? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> um and like kind of melded all together and had fun and um You got to talk to some pretty cool people. Yeah, I got to talk to um, Emily Calandrelli from uh Netflix also uh Exploration Outer Space. I'm not sure what network that's on, but it's like public, mm. um, public, you know, TV show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. PBS was it something? I, something. It's on similar, similar vibe. Mm. Similar vibe. It's on one of those kind of stations. Um, and we talked to Hank Green, which was Whoa. so fun. And then Hank Green asked me to come on his podcast. Yeah. Um, I guess Check that out. Link that in the bio. Oh, I will. Um, <laughs> I guess that was one time of me communicating my science to people. But I, I don't know. I think it's like so different when I look at people who like do. I don't know. It's so hard to define like what is a science communicator. But I feel like mm. people were like, oh, you do SciComm because you do STEM And I'm like, I feel like I don't do SciComm. I've created a platform for people who do SciComm to come do their thing. But like mm-hmm. I'm just facilitating this whole situation. Like I'm mm. not. Mm. What am I communicating? Mm. But maybe that's mm. imposter syndrome. Mm. Yeah, Anyways. I feel like that might be it. Yeah, it takes a whole team of people. I guess. But I don't it know. Takes a I feel like I don't do any. I don't know. Literally. I do plenty, but don't I feel like I don't do anything. Don't say you don't anyways. do anything. I, bro, all I did was show up and have a good time. You um, literally created this whole podcast. I mean, that's technically true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And yeah. you had people come in and talk about that their journey, but also their research. And yeah, really but that's, explain that. But that's what I'm saying. Like, to the I'm not audience. doing the thing. I'm like creating a platform for people to come do their thing. Yeah, and without you, there wouldn't be the platform. Yeah, so but does that are. make me a psychom person? Yes, or just you tell them to talk about science. Okay. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Anyways, I'll take it. I don't want to argue because I hate it. arguing. Oh no, I love arguing. <laughs> we know. <laughs> um. Yeah. Anyways. So yeah, so that, I think that was also a lot of Stemacy opened a lot of doors for me, and mm. I think it legitimized uh, how I feel about. I don't know if legitimize is like the right word to use there, but it made me feel like okay, I don't have to be this like huge professor to do something mm-hmm. that makes a difference, and I can like take whatever tools I have in my toolkit right now in my current position and do what I can to make things better for whoever is able to like whoever I'm able to reach um which I mean is like why we started this podcast and mm-hmm. whatever I don't think I would have started this podcast if I hadn't done Stembassy first mm. um I also wouldn't have done this podcast if you guys weren't in it together with me um <laughs> I'm definitely not a solo project person so yeah except for the time you had to do the math thing what math thing like in in high school oh well I told you I cried <laughs> and switched out of the class immediately after that no. experience okay no solo project no ever solo again. projects bro no. except you know like a peach. oh my whole dissertation yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. yeah. Uh, shall yeah. shall we take a short break um I guess we can take a break to Is hear it? from our sponsors, sponsors. <laughs> Canva Pro is a premium plan of Canva that comes with additional features, including unlimited storage for photos and assets. You can upload your own images and access millions of photos. You'll get exclusive access to 400,000 free photos, illustrations, and templates. Sign up and get a 30-day free trial with our link so you can make cool things to put up on your walls or flyers to promote your events. And you can do this by going to this link partner.canva.com slash triplicates. Check study gives you access to homework help and allows you to look up answers to questions found in textbooks, which check keeps as a database. You can also submit new questions to experts and get answers to them as little as 30 minutes. Use the code CHEG AFF5. That is all capital letters C H E G G A F F 5. For $5 off your first month of check. 
Welcome back, everyone. Before we <laughs> say goodbye, what is something you'd like to tell your younger self, Amanda? Oh, um. Oh, what would I tell her? Oh, to apply to more than one school girl. <laughs> <laughs> let's apply to two. Let's start a little earlier. Well, I only applied to two schools for to go to undergrad too, which is like oh. you think you would learn from your own mistakes. Oh no, I did not. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. You're all right. It's okay. Now. We're here, bro. Everything worked out fine, but yeah, I don't know. And like, I don't know. Apply to more than two schools. I think I'm. I, I love where I am now, and I think I am thriving here, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else actually mm-hmm. so maybe it's totally fine to do what you did mm. um <laughs> <laughs> <Plenty> yeah <of> <laughs> um and then i would say um mm, like chill out like mm. i think i like to do things fast and yeah. you don't need to do things fast all the time mm. yeah okay this is some good advice thank you okay um, cool. so should we round out the show? Yeah. Okay. Let's run some, let's do some observations, run some stats on our data. Asama, what's the question this week? Okay. So the question this week is, would you rather be on a reality TV show or a game show? Okay. And after that, you, you can choose to collab, collaborate, elaborate okay. on mm, what show mm. it might oh, be. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Uh, are, like any reality TV show? Yes. Okay. Given that I feel you like have an the answer. skills necessary, maybe. Okay. Okay. But like, real- so you, if you I say reality TV so. show, is it a whole season? But because game show is like, I feel like one episode, right? It's it's up to you. Oh, okay. Mm. Lunis, any thoughts? Um, I'd like to be like the girl on the side <laughs> of Love Island who everyone comes to with all their problems. Oh, you know, like oh, one be removed so fun. from yeah, the yeah, drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And I'm just there vibing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like literally not yes. actually. Yeah. I don't want a connection. No, yeah. I just want to no, sit there. You like coupled up Wait. episode one, have no yeah. problems the rest of the time. <laughs> Wait, remember? Uh, I forget that guy who's like super funny. He's like tall with like a bucket hat. And oh my God. Always says, Obi? Like, Obi? Uh, yeah. I love Obi. That's who I want to be on the game show. Like, says Obi, like every time there's yeah. an elimination, they're like, no, this place is not the same without her. Nah, <laughs> it was like part of the furniture. Uh, uh, t- <laughs> <laughs> I was, <laughs> one of the undergrads um, from in my lab is like British. And yeah. we were talking. <laughs> she was like, oh, I lost my British accent. I want to go back to my British accent. I was like, oh, do you want us to talk in a British accent? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I do that with Chloe too. And I was like, Chloe, would you pass the type? And she like the type <laughs> over the scotch tape, and then she goes, "What do you call this?" And then I was like, "The the scotch tape." And she was like, "No, it's a cello tape. You're not real British." And I'm like, "Damn, you caught me." Cello, <laughs> like cellophane. I don't know. Yes, yes, yes. That's so funny. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Okay, so you said reality TV show. Yeah, I'm in the reality. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I'm not smart enough to be on a game show. Um. I uh, yeah I I well, no no that wasn't a yeah you but I was like yeah I, I don't think I'm smart enough to be on a game show either. Like imagine being on what's it called that Jeopardy? one? Yeah. How do they know these things? Oh I don't know. D watches Jeopardy. She's so good at it. Religiously. Yeah, like all the time. I'm like I'm amazed. Anyways, um I I think I would be on a reality TV show. Um I. I would love to say Love Island because the vibes are immaculate. <laughs> but like maybe Love Island Australia. <laughs> like Love Island Australia is like the inferior of the three. Okay, but like Love Island UK is like chaotic. <laughs> yeah, I think you would thrive. <laughs> Just to watch it all unfold. I mean, it's like, yeah, I think I would have so much fun. Um, would not like anyone that knows I do science to see my belly button ever actually. Oh, that's right. so, you can wear cuter so I'll have to wear pieces. like a sarong the whole time uh, uh, so, <laughs> sarong is such a strange word yes a what a, a sarong. sarong those like little <laughs> those little things you tie around oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean it's basically what I'm wearing now it's like a lot less fabric but it's like it's, it's like a very not even it's like a skirt where like a it's quarter see-through. of your butt is out yeah Oh, it's yeah. it's an adaptation of a sarong, I guess. I guess. Oh, oh. is this a sarong? Yeah. Oh. <gasps> wow. There might be people wearing this. And then the white people this. make it sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. It's okay. Anyways, yeah. So I, okay, maybe I'd be on Love Island UK. But also Love Island US was pretty good. Season yeah. three. 
or season two? Which one was Kira Green on? Who? <laughs> oh my god! Maybe maybe that with was the one season. Do you remember I didn't... Cash? You didn't watch that season. I don't know. Did I watch it with my brother? <laughs> Cash oh, is my a girl, right? <laughs> no, Cash is a oh. boy. Cashel. He has his little curls. Cashel. 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 With an elephant. <laughs> Anyway, the song. I just love Island oh, so much. So <laughs> Love Island. Okay, reality show. Well, yeah. Are you gonna come to Love Island with us? <laughs> She's gonna Absolutely say Absolutely not. <laughs> I want to go on the Amazing Race. Oh <laughs> my god! What a good reality TV show. <laughs> right? Season five, mm-hmm. best season, hands down. <laughs> I don't remember what season. What any do you consider of that, the contestants are? Like but a game show and a reality TV show. I feel like it's both almost. Uh, wow. Yeah. Did that? you find a the middle <laughs> of the Venn diagram? I don't know. You're the stats person. That's this is only for you to deal with. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Pete and I have been like, this is our life bucket list actually that we want to be on. Did you do it? Oh my God. That'd and be so he's fun. already like, you know, run he's marathons. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, yeah. Blah, you can let him go do the runs. And I'm over here like, Ah, <laughs> what is this? But I like how there's a good combination of like physical strength versus mm-hmm. like logic or like yeah. finding the fastest tuk tuk and like yeah. trying to finesse your way through. Yeah. You get to like travel and eat yeah. good food yeah. and like figure out puzzles. Pizza. Yeah, Pizza. love that. Oh my stuff. gosh, so fun! I watched yeah. The Amazing Race with my roommates as the pandemic started. That was like our little thing to do Whoa. together. We we're like, oh, I guess we're all home. Like, let's watch TV together. Yes. What a great choice. What a great choice. I'm Y'all can amazing. Come yes. If you want. And it's like, it's teamwork, which is really yeah. cute. You know, I love yes. a team situation. Yes. Yeah. Um, a group project. I like just like the most random like full circle challenge where you have to like learn a dance from a local or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you like mess it up. And then they're like, I'm tired of seeing your face. Here's a card. Go to the next oh, station. No. <laughs> it's like, I think they don't make reality TV they, the way they used to in like the early 2000s. <laughs> Are you saying I'm from the early 2000s? No, I'm, I'm just saying. Technically, I'm from the 90s. No, no, no. I'm well, saying the last time they reality, don't yeah. make TV shows the way they used to, is what I'm saying. Like, that's yes. like a, a holdover yes. of and like the style that's of reality coming from TV. from the CBA scholar. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, again, they they, they don't circle. make music videos the way they used to either. <laughs> I'll true. tell you that right now. That's true. Where's the cinematography? Where's the. It's all. Anyway. What are music videos even like now? Like this. It's just. Yeah. Oh, I see. Throwing that ass in a circle. I see. But it yeah. works right for um some some groups. Oh yeah, yeah. It like, works. Um, yeah. What's the group you like? Little Mix. Yes. Oh yeah. They can, <laughs> Little Mix has dancing. choreography though. They do. Like, they, they do. do. They do be doing things. They do. They do be doing. Things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that was great. Yeah. Um, fun well, chaotic episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, Anise. What's the stats looking like? Um, I'm just going to count Amazing Race as a reality TV show. And we're going to say 100% of the PhD students in our study are willing to go on a reality TV show (laughs) and would be having a great time. Absolutely. I'm with the caveat of maybe having money won at the end. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Oh, I forgot you can win money on the last. Um, so it's a little bit of both, you know, you know, we live for the drama, whether it's running to the fastest tuk tuk or yes. trying to figure out Chase's love triangle with <laughs> oh my gosh. Brittany and yeah. I don't know who. <gasps> oh my gosh. Anyways, with yeah. that, Asama? Yeah. And if you would like to hear more about our thoughts on yeah. reality TV show <laughs> or anything grad school related, <laughs> science communication, whatever, just let us know. And you can let us know on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, or TikTok at Triplicates Pod. And you can email us at triplicatespod at gmail.com. If you like us, support us on patreon.com slash triplicates pod. And with that, obrigada y chao. Gracias y adios. Kapunka. Bye. Do you remember Curtis? Yes, that's who I was trying to figure out the name. <laughs> oh, but it's a chase. Yeah, that was like the first yeah, word that name.